All right, y'all. Y'all ready to get started with this? All right. So I kind of reintroduce myself, guys. My name is Mike Glaspie. Um, I'm an investor. Mike Jones, who? Uh, yeah. <laughs> Uh, I'm an investor first, right? I started a team and our team focuses primarily on investors and we do roughly about 25 to 35 deals a month working with a little bit smaller uh, size deals, but doing more creative stuff, buying holds, fixing flips, subject to seller financing, things of that nature. So what, what you don't know about me is I actually spent about 10 years in the military. And when I was in the military, it was very hush hush about us being in front of social media and being in front of the spotlight because we wanted to keep everything that we were doing kind of quiet. So when I got out and I realized, hey, how do we generate leads? How do we attract more of our clients and things like that? We had to get a little bit more creative. And so today I'm going to be talking about how to actually leverage podcasts and other media to actually attract investors and why we want to attract investors, regardless if that's your clientele or not. OK, so first off, let's talk about what an investor is. An investor is somebody who likes to have their money make money. Plain and simple. If an investor is going to buy a property because that's their thing, it's real estate, who in here thinks that they're only going to buy one property and stop? Nope. So what does that mean? They're a repeat client. Now we can do more with less. We got one client that buys 15 properties, then all of a sudden it's like, hey, you sold 100 homes this year? Yeah, we did, but it was with five clients, right? Potentially, right? We want people like that. Now when we're thinking of investors, not only on the client side, let's think about them on the agent side. If they're people who know that their money can make money, then they're thinking a little bit more logically. They're thinking with, uh, with, with numbers driven. That's a much easier conversation to have with somebody when we're trying to get them from one place to another because it's no longer about the emotion. It's no longer about the, you know, oh, but my mom's over here or my sister's over here. It's like this actually makes sense. All right. That's why we want to attract investors. So. Podcast, media, anything like that. What is this? This is a place for us to build our presence to become top of mind. Everybody's heard it, right? In order to be successful in real estate, you got to stay top of mind, right? If you're not the top three people, then you're probably not going to be selected by that client, by that agent, by that whoever, right? If, you ain't, if you're not hungry for uh, chicken, hey, it's not top three, you're not going to get chicken at night, right? So you're always trying to stay top of mind. Ruben's about to get into social media real heavy, but I'm going to talk about podcasts because we really don't cover podcasts too much. And people don't think of podcasts. When you think of podcasts, that's just a platform for you to express your expertise, right? Whatever it is, whatever your knowledge area is. I don't care if it's luxury. I don't care if it's land, mobile homes. It really doesn't matter. It could be finance. Like you do finance YouTube videos. That's perfect. It's a platform. YouTube, podcasts, all the same concept. When you start to put your name out there, remember we're going to a digital era right now. Every piece of content that you produce on a platform like YouTube, like podcasts, etc., is now entering your name into this beautiful algorithm that we call search engine optimization. What does that mean? That means when people type in your name, it's more likely to be the first one to pop up in Google. Again, top of mind, right? So it's important to understand that. So how do you actually leverage podcasts? How many, how many people in here actually want to start their own podcast? Maybe about one or two. It's not, it's not many. It's not many people, right? Some people are like, uh, yes, that's me. Other people are like, uh, that's not my cup of tea. All right, that's fine. So obviously you can start your own podcast. Absolutely. But what about just being a guest on a podcast? Does some of you guys feel more comfortable just having one episode out? Right? Right? Yeah, just one episode out there. And now the beautiful thing about that is there's so many real estate podcasts. They constantly need guests, so that's an easy sell. But what if we go beyond just real estate? We go finance podcast, right? What else do you like? Home decorating, I don't care. Lawn care, I really don't care, right? Something where you can build your presence because you talked about your niche and they now know, hey, if I need real estate, I can go to this individual, okay? So it's, it's almost like a given to be a guest, but let's talk about if you actually did start your own. When you start your own, not only are you building that platform, but why is it so powerful? So we all live in a position where we need to give first, right? Everybody in this room understands the power of giving. We do value add. Now, why is that so important? Does anybody want to chime in and say, why is giving value so important to attracting people? Anybody? Don't worry. Huh? What's in it for me? Yep, that's one. Anybody else? 
what's in it for me? What you got? I know you want to say something. What else? Well, that's fine. <laughs> can't be mad at that. I can't be mad at that. This, this is distracting. This is distracting. I do apologize. I do, I do apologize. So, so, so it's uh, it's always what's in it for me, right? So yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, got it, got it, got it. But what's in it for me? Why do I care? So they always say uh, nobody uh, help me out with it. They don't care how much you know until they know how much you care, right? So you got to show them some sort of value. But in addition to that, we have this beautiful thing in human psychology called the law of reciprocity. Does anybody know what that is? What's the law of reciprocity? I do something nice for you, you're going to want to reciprocate. You damn right. I want to give back, right? Just naturally. Just naturally. If you, oh, hey, you, hey, you handed me a, a knife? Oh, awesome, man. What else do you need? Like, I'm ready to help you out. It's a beautiful play where we can just play on the human psyche and all we're doing is producing content on things that we like to talk about. You can't beat that, right? So you're sitting there talking about something, providing good quality value. Law of reciprocity comes into play. Then what do we do next? That's our call to action. Hey, guys, why don't you subscribe? Hey, guys, why don't you like? Hey, guys, why don't you uh, visit my website? Hey, guys, why don't you share this content with somebody else? Hey, matter of fact, who do you know that's looking to buy or sell real estate anywhere across the nation or the globe, Puerto Rico, Mexico, so forth and so on, because we have agents that can reach out to them, all right? So uh, we started a podcast uh, probably a year or so ago. Mm -hmm. So the area we sell in is called Research Triangle Park, or commonly referred to as the Triangle. So we're not talking about real estate. All we're doing is like bringing in interesting like local small businesses, charities, and doing all these, all these spotlights yeah. with people. And the page, you know, quickly grew. I mean, we were boosting ads and stuff to get more visibility and exposure. The more I got into it, though, the more I realized, like, hey, these are successful business owners. We're like-minded, like we can share things that'll help each other in our businesses. But what? They're successful business owners, so they got money, they got nice houses, they got uh, good networks, public-facing businesses, so they know a lot of people, and then they have large staffs. So now I'm adding all these people into my database. I'm boosting the podcast, which is free exposure for their business. Then I'm like, hey, are you currently using Facebook ads to grow your business? No, like let's grab a beer sometime. Let me teach you for free, like show you how to get results for your business. Law of reciprocity, right? Then all I got to do is take you out to dinner, buy you a drink every once in a while, take you to a hockey game or something. And I'm building my network with these influential people in my community. And I never even mentioned the word real, real estate. Add them onto Facebook. Of course, over time they figure out, yeah, Jordan's a realtor. Um, but it's a, I think it's a good play. Um, you know, as I'm looking to change up my lead generation styles. Absolutely. And I never, I never mentioned this, but out of all the volume that I've done, we've never paid for leads, not once, because we're using plays like this, right? Just like you're saying, building up this audience where they're coming to us as whatever you want to call it, subject matter experts or whatever the case may be. But they're saying, hey, I have a question. Who has the answer? Boom, top of mind, like you're saying, right? The networking potential and the networking opportunities are just, they're enormous because everybody wants to be a part of it. Not to mention the opportunities to even monetize that if you so choose. If you built your audience large enough, now when a lender, a mortgage broker, uh, an attorney, when you go and ask them to be one of your sponsors, which you'll do often for events, why don't you say, hey, why don't you sponsor my podcast? or my YouTube channel, right? Now you can monetize that, and it may not be putting a lot of money in your pocket, but now, if, let's say you did Facebook ads, it might be covered for free, it, potentially. It strokes their ego. Of course. You're, you're doing something nice, of course. nice for them, you know, as, as well, for free, yep. right? When charities come in, too, I always uh, stroke a check to the charity, yep. and I don't know if I'm doing it for a reason, but it's still pretty good. And it's a great way to lead generate. Yep, that's it. Own mind share, your own mind share. So primarily, my podcast is done over Zoom. That's how we do it. And we just send them out a calendar link. They find a time that's available. Obviously, it fits our schedule. We hop on, knock it out. We actually even have a, a YouTube editor, a podcast editor in the background. And he'll just take that same video and audio and he'll split it. Same content. One will be podcast only, audio, and the other one will be the YouTube channel. That's how we do that. Oh.
Ours is just audio version, and then it goes out to Apple and Spotify through some kind of syndication fee. I don't know. I have a guy for that. Yep. I'm thinking about launching a real estate one too. Um, I like got the logo and design for uh, direction coaching. I haven't launched it yet, but my intention is to do like top agent interviews from around the country and then launch that out and build an audience that way to attract coaching clients, mastermind clients, and then like- You have a few in the room. Educational, edu educational programs. Like, I'm the number one expired agent in my market. So like we're building a course for expires that we're gonna sell. So I'm like, how do we build a, a authentic, uh, organic audience is the word I'm looking for. So I'm just like, okay, I'll just call up a bunch of people that are selling 500,000 houses a year and just interview them and then boost that to real realtors to, to grow an audience around it. Yeah, oh. uh, if you don't mind, I'll jump on that. And not just throw another light shiny object in front of you, but we ran a podcast as well. And actually, Jordan was actually on it um, a little while ago. We that was quit, fun. Yeah, we quit doing it. I love video because I need that. <laughs> um, but uh, it, we've got we got plenty of sales from it, and a lot. We were doing coaching at the time, and a lot of coaching from it as well. I mean, and there's so much cool little hints and tricks that you can get from somebody that runs a business outside of real estate too Absolutely. that you can bring into your business. But here's the deal: nobody has time for you to talk to you for an hour and some an hour and some change. If you're going to promote them. For sure, they will sit down with you for an hour and some change, and you can pick their mind the whole time. It was great for us. Yeah. So, I'll, you know, hats off. The po podcast was the bomb. It, it had been the, the number one single game changer for us, not only to bring in referrals immediately, but also agent attraction, right? Because people are constantly calling. Now, conversion rate, that's another discussion. But nonetheless, we get a lot more phone calls. I got to work on my script. I got to work on my script. Yeah, yeah, we're going to talk about it. Be direct, be direct. But, uh, Ultimately, uh, what, which both of them were alluding to, you can have all of this beautiful, you know, platforms and so forth and so on. But if you don't have something to direct them to on the back end, it's kind of all for naught, right? So again, if we're talking to people who want to invest or even buy real estate, great. We need to have a referral system in the back end. I need to have my group of uh, referral agents, right? If we're talking about agent attraction, obviously we have the model, but we need to be prepared for that. Another concept is who in here knows uh, who Jim Rohns is? I was hoping a lot of hands come up, right? Jim Rohns, people don't know this, but before he started really writing books and getting very popular, there was a PR rep that came and actually met with him. And that PR rep is actually the key to Jim Rohns' success. He said, hey man, you're doing great speaking, but have you ever thought about writing a book? Jim Rohns was like, okay, I'll write a book. Great, hey, have you ever thought about creating a course? Great, have you ever thought about creating a coaching program? And the way that he described it is, every single one of those products was just a cog on the wheel. The key is if we bring in one client on this cog, how do we rotate them around the wheel? The podcast or any sort of platform is just a cog on the wheel. How do we rotate them into an agent? How do we rotate them into a client? Sell a course, sell a book, whatever the case may be. Tony Robbins came up under Jim Rohn. Yep, exactly. Yeah. Yep. So how do you do a call to action on a podcast? Right, you can do a call to action on video and all that, yep. buttons and all that, but you can direct someone to another side. But how do you, or, so, or do you not? Well, you, well, so if you look at podcast platforms now, they'll typically have descriptions on the bottom. And so every, at the end of every one of our videos or every one of our podcasts, they'll be like, all right, guys, hey, who do you know who's looking to buy real estate and wherever across it is? If so, go ahead and reach out to us directly below. Okay. Yep, do this. Yep. I see people do that. All the time. Yeah, the videos, I'm always doing all the hand gestures, and I'm like, hey, hit the thumbs up. Go ahead and subscribe to the channel. Sure. If you guys are looking to maybe buy our merchandise or purchase our course, the description's in the link below, so forth right. and so on. YouTube, right. obviously, I know you do it on YouTube channels. I didn't know it Yep, on well, podcasts the same way. On the audio part though too. Oh, audio as well. Yeah, okay. yeah. So just on the audio one, if you're sitting in just on the platform, right, whatever it is, the description could, you can put in the links and things like that. Okay. And everything that we do, we link it all together. So my Instagram has all of it. You know what I mean? And Facebook, all the stuff. So when the biggest thing, and I know Ruben's going to touch on social media things, so I won't dive into it too much, but anywhere somebody finds me, because I'm always worried about search engine optimization being top of mind, anywhere they find me, they see everything I've got. So if somebody found me on LinkedIn and they wanted to buy my book, they can find it. If they found me on Instagram and they wanted to buy my course, they can find it. Right? And so it's just about, again, the call on the wheel. Do you have an average, um, is there like a, a podcast time? that is recommended that most people do, 30 minutes, 45 minutes, is it, like it, it's too long, it's too much time, too long for like a podcast. I'll put, it, I'll put it like this, time? there is no one size fits all, and I'm gonna tell you why. 
my podcast is anywhere from 40 to 45 minutes. Okay. I've seen several can do anywhere from 15 to 30 minutes. Uh, Joe Rogan, hours. two hours. <laughs> he just goes out there. Yeah. Right. Depends if he takes mushrooms or not. Right. Yeah. <laughs> he's, he's, he's all over the place. He's talking about. Yeah. 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 Ridiculous. So there is no real uh, general rule of thumb. There are some YouTube algorithms we can talk about uh, uh, later on, but uh, the 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 purpose of it all is just get out there and talk, man. Right. right. If you Michael, want to record a ten minute episode, have you are you going to integrate your podcast with um, what is it club? I'm just Clubhouse. Clubhouse. So what I I've heard several like they're already interviewing, so kind of taking that audio and, and putting those on your podcast. That's a good idea. Oh, I haven't even thought about it. I've been invited to Clubhouse quite a few times. But I, sometimes I get over inundated with apps, and so I'm like, meh. Yeah, but, it's an agent attraction gold mine right now. Is it? Yes. Okay, well, I'm definitely going to look back into it. <laughs> That's how <laughs> is the Glenn and uh, Grant, Grant Cardone, Cardone connect with the yeah. EXV in Lisa the clubhouse. Lisa Copeland connected them on Clubhouse in a room. Oh, yeah. Wait, what happened? Oh, yeah. Yeah. Grant Cardone and Glenn. Oh, and Grant. Who, who, you know, she knew Grant, he was in the clubhouse, she was already. She ran and the they clubhouse. have a conversation. They connected and they started having behind the scenes. I have the app downloaded too. I just never really played yeah, it. Yeah, so homework. Everybody's gonna get on Clubhouse. Well, okay. you got an Android. <laughs> oh, okay. yeah. Sorry. Well, sorry. Well, you got yeah. an Android. Yeah. Just oh, see how it's like. Oh, don't jingle that at my phone. The next house over is <laughs> yeah. bringing your phone that's Damn it. <laughs> <laughs> and we have a brush right outside the window. Okay. <laughs> Absolutely, that's just one more platform to put content out there. And that's two that's the wrap of my yeah, two three birds with one stone. Also, I, again, I don't know if he's gonna get into this, but you know, there's apps out there like Hootsuite and Planoly where you can literally post once and it'll populate on all of your social media platforms and YouTube platforms and so forth and so on. So it makes it very simple. Doesn't that mess with your engagement? If you don't, if you don't like, manually post on each platform. Potentially, and I don't know the answer to that. I'll ask my tech guy because he's in the yeah. background doing it. Yeah. But I know when I first started out and I was just doing it myself, I only have so much time in a day. So I'm like, Mah, let's get it out there. Um, what was the other one? You said this besides Hootsuite. Uh, you got Planoly. Um, I mean, there's Buffer. If This and That. Which Buffer one? is another one. Buffer. Buffer. Let's, yeah, there's quite a few. So, Mike, yes. I know that you guys have run on a lot of like investor friendly agents. I mean, mm -hmm. so what are. What are some of your best tips, you know, in attracting? Because personally, I, I love agents that work with investors. I just think you, they have more of a business mindset. I think yes. a lot of us are actually investors here. So, I mean, how do you kind of integrate that from an agent attraction standpoint? From the agent attraction standpoint, so there's a lot of people who say that they're investor friendly. That's a, a hell of a lot different than being an investor specialist or somebody who actually understands investing. Or an investor themselves. Exactly, exactly. So a lot of people say, yeah, absolutely, I'll work with an investor. When they're saying that, that's fine, but do you understand how to underwrite? Do you understand how to actually look at cash on cash return, IRR, if that is a uh, situation that the client is potentially going to be looking for? So when we bring them in, first off, I, I do this with my clients, I do this with the agents, I pre-screen them just to see what their base level understanding is. Once I understand what it is that they're looking for and what their knowledge base is, well, then we can fit the model for them. So for example, um, there's quite a few of our agents that aren't even concerned with the stock. They're not even concerned with the stock at all, right? They're concerned with, well, I'm looking to build residual income. I need to make this much money in active income so I can put it into a rental portfolio. That's what I want. It's like, great, let's talk numbers. This is why, for example, EXP works for you because you're gonna be able to make so much more money by keeping more of your money. Great, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Also, as you build out your team, which you're already gonna do, you're gonna get a little rush here. That is already reducing your passive income requirement, right? And the way we do that is find the financial freedom number, which is essentially what is your monthly debt. As soon as you can hit break even, you're financially free, right? Great, so if you need $3,000, you can either buy 30 rental properties, single family homes at $100 a door every month after debt, right? Or you can go ahead and get 500 a month in rev share and now you just greatly reduced how many rental properties you need, right? So we look at that five months more. Six agents, right? And so we, we take that approach and then we go ahead and knock it out the park and go, hey, what about this uh, stock up? 
what about the stocks, right? So you get awarded free stocks, or if you got the uh, the agent program, you can buy into it as well. But they, they think very analytically, typically, if they come in saying that they are an investor or they want to work directly with investors. Perfect. Do you guys, I know that you've done some bigger pocket stuff. Yes. Do you do anything as far as agent attraction with that? Uh, no, bigger pockets is very, very picky about what you can and cannot say on their platform. Um, but just by being a guest on a lot of their uh, content, people have reached out and flooded. And again, it just goes back to just producing content, being in the right place. What I always say is, because uh, new agents will start, they'll get their business cards, they'll get their signs. First place they'll go to hand out their business cards is the grocery store. Eh, that's cool, but what are people at the grocery store for? Groceries, not to buy a house. So I say, if you're going to go fishing, go where the fish are. Bigger Pockets for me, that's a community of purely investors. So I parked my ass right there in Bigger Pockets and I just went to work, right? And, and that's why we, weren't, we, weren't, why we did not have to pay for leads for, for the last two years now. So how often do you work on podcasts? So the way it's, it works out now is we have our Calendly, uh, uh, calendar set up and so we'll send it out to our potential guests. They'll schedule, we'll go ahead and record it. We recorded so far in advance that we now have them scheduled out until middle of March right now. How often do you run them? Once oh, so it's once, it's once a week. Yeah. Yeah. So it's four episodes a month. Yeah. So you do blogs too and everything? Not too. blogs, really what we do is we just, we just transcribe the YouTube message right. and then we post it as oh, a, blog. So it's a blog. Yeah, so it's, again, we just repurpose everything. And on YouTube, you could, it'll give you a whole script. Yep. You can go ahead and edit it. What's the name of your channel? Military Cash Flow. Everybody, go ahead and subscribe. <laughs> Hit the like button. Right, <laughs> right, if you're looking for any, anything in the description below, take a look. Books, courses, all that good stuff. Military, military cash flow. Military cash flow. Yeah. Any other questions? Okay. So you need to guess that you have any people. Nice. Cash flow. Give back to your social media websites. Everything you have is all on a complete cycle. Yes, yep. And so I own actually quite a few different companies. I do have a brokerage company, but I have an education company. I got a hotel company. I have quite a few different companies. So it's, I have one website that centralizes everything, but then the other ones are essentially like subdivided. Oh, if they will. Use them to share and like everything. Absolutely, like absolutely. Yeah. So, I, so all of a sudden you say, these companies are promoting, like for example, Five Pillars Realty Group is promoting all this military cash flow stuff. Like right. it's, you see, but it's all still integrated. It's yeah. all, yeah. yeah. So I'm, I'm dipping into every client I got in the, in the CRM. Cog in the wheel. Cog in the wheel, baby. That's my next tattoo. Next to ego is not your amigo. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, Any other questions? <laughs>